socialist news and views we let folks introduce themselves do you want to just tell listeners who you are okay my name is um, my name is uh, Guillermo K. I'm a militant and leader of the Partido Obrero Workers Party of Argentina uh I am also I've been three times elected um local uh, local parliamentary member of the province of Buenos Aires which is the the largest uh, province in, in in our country uh under what's called the left unity workers front pitu frente izquierda los trabajadores unidad which is an electoral and political bloc uh, mainly four parties who uh call themselves or define themselves as being part of the revolutionary left uh, and Trotskyist, and, and also supported by other uh, left-wing individuals and organizations that, that support and participate in our campaigns. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, no. I think it's as good an as introduction as any. <laughs> I've been a, a militant for about three decades, so most of my life. Perfect. Yeah. Now, like I was, I, I mentioned to you before. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people in the United States, even people on the left or socialists, are not really aware. I don't think of what's going on, uh, what's been going on in Argentina, especially recently. Um, can you talk a little bit about Javier uh, Millet, who began serving as president in Argentina in December, uh, super right wing, about his huge anti-worker omnibus bill, and then the, you know, the strikes and resistance that have been going on in response to the bill. Yeah, definitely. Um... Javier Millet has been um, part of a political phenomenon that is that is much wider, uh, which which is a these sort of far right populist uh, demagogue figures that have been um, being able to uh, electorally uh, channel discontent with traditional parties and political figures. This is definitely the case in Argentina. We've had a, a the last. Two presidents have not been able to go for re-election, which is something that's happening in many other countries as well, with uh, a lot of political, economic, and social unrest. So we had a central-right government that had come after a long cycle of um, Kirchnerismo, which is a, like a central-left variant of, of the traditional Peronist party. Um, and then we have the central-right, pro-US, pro-free market uh, Macri government. 2015 to 2019 had a huge spike in inflation and foreign debt and devaluation was then replaced by a Peronist government of Alberto Fernandez, who also who was it was an even worse disaster in the, and continued uh, the programs with the IMF austerity cuts and a very uh, and a huge um, spike in devaluation inflation and poverty. Uh, so I think um, we could try to, to to make a brief summary to say that Javier Millet, a, a figure with, with no uh, political structure, who did not come from the party that has any like previous history, though the sort of ideas and, and things he defends do have a history in Argentina, which we can talk about because he has uh, spoken highly of conservative governments of 100 years ago, of has economic ideas similar to the ones carried out by uh, military dictatorships, what are called, you know, the Chicago Boys, or mm. you know, a neoliberal uh, economic thought, uh, and the Menem government, which he, in the '90s, which he is also uh, an admirer of, right. uh, which was a government sort of in line with the Re Regan Thatcher privatization and attacks against uh, working class conquests, but. Um, he has, you know, in a very similar way, I think, uh, to outright sort of uh, uh, movements in, in the States and Bolsonaro in Brazil and other movements like this. He, he tried to show himself as like uh, outside the system, critical to, to, to the previous uh, governments. And uh, in, in last year, it was a long electoral process between primaries and local elections and so on. Uh, he was able to win the, the runoff uh, finally. Um, and I think the, the biggest news was the the collapse of Peronism. It was, it was their worst election since they even found, founded as a movement. And uh, 
how Millet was able to, in, in this crisis of impoverishment, uh, been able to channel even uh, working class, poor people to vote for a far right uh, electoral um, alternative. Uh, so, so that's a basic setup. Now, his uh, what he, what he, what he's done since he comes to, to to government two two and a half maybe three months ago uh, has has been uh, a turn for the worse fast. Even though he were already in a very difficult situation. Uh, it was a hundred percent evaluation as soon as he uh, took office. A uh, fifty-four percent inflation in two months. Adding on to the previous one is two hundred fifty percent inflation in the last twelve months. So it's it, we're living a real economic catastrophe. Right. And uh, Millet's approach has been very much to try to put together a shock and awe uh, kind of uh, operation. Uh, so he um, he as soon as he took office in the in the first two or three uh, weeks we had uh, this level of devaluation while keeping wages and the public budget fixed to the to, to the 2023 values. So this is saying that most public services are saying that they're just going to have to close their doors. For example, public universities and so on, because with 254 percent inflation. If you have to work with the same budget as the previous year, that means shut down. Right. Um, then uh, he, the, the security minister, who was a, another right wing candidate, Patricia Woolrich, very closely tied to the DEA, the Mossad, and uh, another um, similar security apparatus of the world, of the world, has said uh, the Western Hemisphere has said. Uh, that uh, public demonstrations are uh, prohibited, uh, that uh, it is not legal. Well, she didn't even say legal. She said the government will not allow them. Mm. Um, now, this, of course, is anti-constitutional, even with the bourgeois democratic constitution. Right. And they have not actually made a legal change. They, this is just a government announcement. Right. So what this has led to is that uh, all demonstrations, except very massive ones have been repressed by police since they have taken power. Um, they have not been able to enforce this so-called security protocol because demonstrations are in, in this uh, level of economic clashes. And I'm, I'm going to tell you about several other things that are on the way every day in Argentina. But they uh, frequently uh, lead to clashes with the police and, and some arrests and so on. Uh, and actually, it's important to point out that Millet's government, though it offers, let's say, uh, a general path of, of, of anti-labor reform, which is attractive to the bourgeoisie, at the same time, it is a very minority government. And much of the bourgeoisie considers it a rel relatively adver adventurous, uh, like a personal adventure. So uh, it has not been able to gather at this point a real consensus of the bourgeoisie to act. And I, uh, and this has made things very difficult for Millet in Congress and also uh, with the uh, justice. Um, so, for example, uh, this uh, security protocol, after in particular the left and other sectors have been mobilizing, and, and I could tell you about this in more detail. As soon as Millet came to power, ten days later, we had a big march which defied this uh, police protocol. But now the judges have come out and said it's, it's illegal, it's anti constitution, which shows also the inter bourgeois uh, clashes that are right. making it difficult for Millet to uh, stabilize. The other two things that he attempted were a complete uh, social and economic uh, package of reforms between uh, one decree. Uh, that he announced 10 days after taking office and one uh, legal bill that he sent to Congress during the summer uh, vacations saying that it was uh, urgent to pass. The decree modified 350 laws and this omnibus bill uh, wanted to, uh, <clears throat> to reform 650 laws. Uh, so, so 1,100 uh, legal changes in two strokes, which covered 
everything from uh, electoral changes, uh, emergency powers to the president, labor reform, and a complete, um, completely modifying most of the uh, regulations on most of economic and productive areas of the country. Um, this proved too ambitious to pass. Of course, uh, we we were in the streets every day. This was debated in Congress, as I said, clashing with the police. Even as Peronism, which leads most unions, uh, has not had a, a how can you say a combative strategy, mm. but, but, but but a demobilizing one, which we can uh, talk about in more detail. They were forced to call a twelve-hour strike, first first national strike in six years. Uh, which which will tell you something about the level of demobilization while uh, wages have been being destroyed, uh, but which was an important demonstration and 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 a, a strike. Several unions, even bureaucratic ones, are calling uh, national strikes in their industries, and uh, this has been important. And but also, as I said, uh, Millet has not been able to reach an agreement. With the other bourgeois parties, he has a, a very small minority in Congress, and this uh, bill, even though most opposition parties voted for it uh, in favor in general, when it came down to the voting article by article, Millet was seeing most of his bill being uh, left uh, left uh, out or being mm -hmm. rejected, and decided to uh, take it out of debate of the Congress. So he suffered a defeat, which had a context of daily demonstrations, but which it is important to be uh, realistic about. Um, the in, inner, inner bourgeoisie uh, clashes have been also a very a dynamic factor. Also, for example, labor reform that is in the decree uh, has been ruled unconstitutional by, by labor tribunals. So, uh, this is uh, the situation. Uh, Millet has called for a national agreement around 10 points of reform, which um, is, are sort of modeled on the Washington uh, Accord, the, you know, the, the 10 points of the, the Washington Accord. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and is uh, trying to pressure the governors into uh, an agreement. But there are many points of, uh, of of clashes. He has cut federal funding to the provinces, uh, affecting education, affecting transport, which are direct uh, wage cuts to the teachers. He has cut off uh, food to the popular soup kitchens that exist in our country in the situation of poverty. So there are many, um, uh, I, I would say, hundreds of points of conflict open, both on a popular um, organization level and of inner clashes uh, within the bourgeoisie. Yeah. And he said, I, I, I believe I saw that he had said recently, you know, yeah, he's going to do, he's going to make these reforms with or without Congress basically is what he said. And so, you know, is this, this is kind of him moving into this new phase of, of trying to use other means to push some of these reforms through. Is that what we're seeing uh, at this point or and and what is what is yeah. he gonna be, what what do we think he's gonna be doing uh, or what has he been trying to do, um, cutting off funds? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that that that's the main uh, weapon he has at this moment. He, he, the bill he sent to Congress, if it had been passed as you know, as the original bill was, would have been a sort of civil dictatorship in the model of uh, Alberto Fujimori or Peru in the nineties, kind of a. Uh, you know, uh, formally elected, but with uh, a sort of uh, the sum of uh, public power and a very repressive regime. He has not been able to gather uh, political conditions for this. Uh, so what he's doing now is, is he's actively saying that since his plans have not been adopted, he is, uh, he is making even tougher uh, cuts against public services in the provinces uh, to the point of shutdown. Right. And is also uh, shutting down many um, federal services. He's uh, last uh, week he occupied with the police the federal uh, news agency and and uh, laid off all the workers. They are this week uh, doing something similar with uh, the um, 
cinema, the, the, the Argentine Cinema Institute, which is, a, 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 how do you say this? A, a, it has, it's autonomous, mm. but depends on the state, and they are cutting off all sort of um, uh, public uh, promotion of, of cinema and other arts as well. Uh, so there are, of course, local conflicts. There have been important levels of demonstrations, but as I said, the main uh, unions and sectors influenced by Peronism as, as an opposition force have been called to not face against Milei directly. Christina Kirchner, of course, a very influential uh, leader, ex-president, recently ex-vice president, and sort of the main figure of, of nationalism in the country, has put out a 33-page uh, document, which, among other things, explains that they don't want to face off Milei in the streets. They want to wait for her next election. He even, she even um, talks about Millet's period of government to 2027 as a, as a, as a, as a given fact, when many, people, many commentators think uh, whether or not he's able to make a stable government is a matter of, uh, you know, it, it remains to be seen. Right. Uh, so they're calling for to, to be able to electorally be an alternative four years from now, not face against the government in the streets, and saying that it is important for uh, labor conditions to be modernized. So she is agreeing on a certain agenda of labor reform, while at the same time making uh, criticisms of the government and its economic policies and so on. Uh, so they have very much an idea of not facing against the streets. Against this, uh, what we are promoting from the Workers' Party, Partido Obrero, and, and is, is gaining certain impulse, is to uh, put together a national assembly of unemployed workers' movements, which are very important in Argentina, um, combative unions, popular assemblies, which have uh, sprung up again in these weeks against the government, and other movements of struggle. You have pensioners, students, you have uh, uh, artists, which... But for the reasons I've said, of these uh, cutbacks are, are also an important uh, sector of struggle. So to be able to form a national assembly of delegates of all these sectors of struggle as a way of uh, having a center for uniting the struggles and making a nationwide scale of struggles and for them not to be uh, isolated or just local, uh, not depending on uh, bourgeois opposition and on the trade union bureaucracy, which have these uh, tactics imposing his opposition, but really sort of uh, wanting Millet to be able to do the dirty work of uh, devaluating wages and labor conditions as something that the you know the ruling class that they represent is very much interested in as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, like you said, starving these uh, public services of funds. You know, obviously another big part of his agenda is the privatization of you know all sorts of areas of the economy, and so. You know, starving these uh, areas of funds is a good way to push that forward because you know you're not you're not getting those services anymore, and so then those you know private entities will look like a potential way to uh, solve some of those problems. And we're you know we're seeing we're seeing a lot of the things you mentioned in the United States. A lot of people are pretty sure that Donald Trump is going to come back to power. Uh, you know. January of next year, and uh, that you well, know, he's a big Trump fan. He was yeah, there yeah. at the APAC uh, conference. Uh, you know, and of course, the Trump Democrats. You know, vote. yeah, the Democrats say, "Oh, this is, um, you know, democracy is at stake here, or whatever." But their only option is to vote. So then, you know, it's like if if uh, you know if Trump wins, then they're all out of ideas, I guess. You know, because they've done they voted and they didn't win. So what do they do now? That's liberals for you, right? They. Then they're like, well, I guess we got to wait four years to fight for democracy. Yeah. Again. And it's just it shows how how, um, you know, vapid and, and, and you know, ridiculous that kind of uh, approach is that, you know, you can't fight, you know, fascism or, you know, authoritarianism, serious challenges to democracy just by, you know, voting harder or, you know, something like that. That's not going to be, you know, I mean, Trump doesn't even really believe in elections. He's been saying he won the last election for years now. And, uh, you know, and if he had a way to, uh, you know, he's been all yeah, he's he been tried at, to take over the yeah, capital city exactly. with, with neo-fascist groups. We, we all saw that around the world. But as you say, uh, proletarian methods are the ones that are going to be able to defeat these um, 
these movements, in Argentina, Millet has not been able to uh, organize uh, these sort of forces uh, physically. They are presence uh, in media, in, in social media, and so on, but, but not, frankly, in the streets. Uh, of course, they may uh, attempt this at some point, but uh, his, for example, his recent speech inaugurating the parliamentary year in Congress, he just came in with a mounted uh, military force with a big military parade, while the left uh, surrounded the Congress uh, uh, with slogans against him. So this is a bit the situation. He has not been able to make like a a popular organized force. He doesn't even really have a party, but that doesn't mean he's not dangerous because uh, he is offering uh, the bourgeoisie, even in a period of, of a big political crisis and difficulties in stabilizing, reforms that they want to carry out. Uh, that you were mentioning, we were talking about privatizations, labor reforms, uh, he is uh, offering Elon Musk and others access to uh, the big lithium reserves that we have in the north of our country. He is offering uh, other important um, international companies, uh, the, the public oil company, uh, and, and he's offering the bigger media companies of, uh, of, our, of, our, of Argentina the possibility to, to concentrate and, and form nationwide monopolies. So he's, he's definitely offering... Uh, the big, the big uh, mon monopolical uh, com companies inside and, and especially the foreign ones from the United States and Europe, uh, very, very good terms of sacking the nation's resources and labor. So, uh, you know, they, they, they will make a push to try to at least take advantage of his government and, and if he can stabilize for it to stabilize. So for us, as we were saying, the idea is not to wait for any election process, but what we need is to prepare the conditions for a general strike that can defeat Javier Mille. This is the slogan voted by the um, recent uh, Central Committee uh, meeting of, of the Partido of, Obrero, of my party. And in this sense, we are, uh, this week, we'll be holding meetings with, with unions, with unemployed workers' organizations, with popular assemblies to try to uh, call this uh, nationwide assembly for uh, April 13th, probably, or well, some point in the next month, if not that exact day, to try to uh, form this sort of center of delegates of working class organizations across the country. The other big uh, date to look out for in the next weeks is March 24th. Uh, March 24th is the anniversary of the uh, last military coup in Argentina in 1976. And is a traditional day of um, democratic anti-repressive uh, mobilization. Of course, this uh, coup uh, killed thirty thousand uh, workers and youth in Argentina in concentration camps and with uh, task forces uh, during during that uh, military government. And Millet's uh, political force, in particular his vice president Victoria Villarroel, is uh, the the daughter of uh, a military officer under the dictatorship, and is a lawyer who has. Uh, Work during her life for uh, to achieve freedom for those uh, military officers officers uh, convicted for genocide under the last dictatorship. And in general, their political force ne uh, negates uh, the the genocide of thirty thousand people in Argentina and says this was a a war between subversives and the government, a civil war, and so on, trying to justify. Uh, these uh, assassinations by the U.S.-backed uh, military dictatorship led by uh, Videla, Jorge Rafael Videla. So uh, this popular demonstration will, will probably be very big. And March 8th was a very big women's demonstration, uh, probably apart from the day of the strike called by the unions, the largest demonstration since uh, Millet came into the government, very important. Millet has um, flirted with overturning abortion, legal abortion, which was won by a very recently, three years ago, by a very uh, mobilized uh, women's movement and, and a general left and democratic movement, which was able to uh, win this against the Catholic Church and the, and the, and the, and the traditional bourgeois uh, laws that, that uh, persecuted women who, re who did abortions. Uh, so this was a very important march that was uh, last Friday. 
And I think March 24th on the anniversary of the coup, we're going to see probably something even bigger because it's a, it's a day that usually um, the student movement and, and independent uh, protesters and, of course, all the left organizations and so and human rights organizations uh, come out in full force. So it definitely has a special content with a government which uh tries to present itself as neutral uh in regards to the last military dictatorship as a, as a way to sort of politically rehabilitate uh the the the, the role the repressive role of the armed forces yeah i mean we've had you know federally they rolled back uh abortion rights here in the u.s which have been uh the law of the land for a long time so now there's different laws in different places um, you know, especially in southern states, a lot of that stuff has been rolled back um, and there hasn't really been, you know, huge protests. Um, again, it's been, you know, they've been putting the brakes on. Oh, we have to we have to win Biden the next election and then he'll do something about it, even though he hasn't done anything about it for, you know, 50 years or however long he's been in government. They've never codified uh, Roe v. Wade protecting uh, people's right to abortion. Um you know, so we just, you know, when we got Trump, who's going to be coming back, you know, there was big protests against Trump. I mean, it's not 100 percent, but I mean, a lot. It's definitely feels like it's very likely like Biden is not, you know, is not very popular. Um, you know, anyway, so the you know, we got him coming back. There was big protests when he was elected the first time. But a lot of that was backed up by, um, you know, the powers that be the Democratic Party and other stuff like that, I think. So I don't know what it will look like this time. I don't know if they're, you know. I mean, there's hopefully they'll still there'll be big protests again. Uh, but I mean, this stuff in, in Argentina, you know, hasn't come out of nowhere. There's been a lot of organizing going on. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit more about the um, the background? I know you talked about it a little bit before about the so-called Argentine monetary crisis and the IMF loan. I think that's the last time I remember was around the IMF loan stuff um, uh, when they were, you know, Argentina was going to get a loan from the IMF. There was a lot of protests around that. Um, you know, do you want to just yeah, talk about the organizing between then and now? Yeah, we did a big campaign against uh, the uh, the IMF agreement that the supposedly central left Alberto Fernandez government uh, uh, held or, or agreed upon, and uh, the left front, the Partido Obrero, and a coalition of over a hundred organizations held mass rallies in the country against this agreement. And we said over and over again, I've said it to hundreds of, of media outlets and so on. Uh, you know, we we had a previous 21 agreements of Argentina with the IMF. All of them ended in an economic catastrophe. They did not serve the interests of the development of the country and this supposed uh, goals that international organisms serve, but they serve to impose the policies of imperialism, of austerity, of sacking our national resources and our riches. And uh, a country, Argentina is a country which has a very important natural resources, very important agricultural production, has an important industry in, in, in certain aspects, though it's very underdeveloped, uh, and could could have a great development, but the, the, the uh, participation in our economy of U.S. imperialism, of European imperialism, does not have our, our best interests at heart, but to keep us in a semi-colonial role. And with uh, increased international uh, conflicts, what the Biden government has pushed for in the region is a, is a much sharper control of, of natural uh, resources. We've had um, Laura Richardson of the uh, Southern Command of the Pentagon uh, in media about two years ago saying, the big uh, military presence in South America and naval presence in South America has to do with natural resources we have here, has to do with our oil, has to do with our water, has to do with our lithium. Uh, this is their interest in the region. So uh, long story short, of course, uh, Peronist central left versions about uh, Cristalina Georgieva's um, uh, period in the IMF being a new, more democratic, more humanitarian IMF, which was going to lead to an agreement where we would pay foreign debt, but to a, a point which would not uh, contradict the development growth of the country, uh, you know, what was, of course, a ruse, a scam, and uh, has led to um, a crisis, has led to uh, a situation where, there, where, where the, the 
<laughs> okay, so it's devaluating systematically, where uh, dollars that are are produced are 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 used to pay this criminal and illegitimate foreign debt. So this situation, which has been endemic in our country's history, and there are many writings trying to explain why um, even working class people or middle class people in Argentina use the dollar as a as a reserve uh, as money and not not the local peso and when this uh, causes the peso to devaluate and so on has to do with the semi-colonial underdeveloped character of the country which none of these uh, national bourgeois uh, political forces even Peronism with its nationalist uh, demagogy where together with Chavez and Lula and so on have tried to present themselves as uh, defenders of the region and even promoting at some point they were talking about uh, a greater political and economic unity of the region, but none of this has, has come to pass. And foreign participation in the economy has grown over the last decade. Uh, Seventy percent of um, medium and large companies in Argentina are owned by foreign capitals, which is actually over two years old. With, with the current shutdown of the industry, the numbers are falling way. So. Uh, just, just to give you a, sort of a general picture of, of the process. So we're definitely going to uh, a new social and economic crisis, uh, which is already very severe. Uh, we're definitely going to, we're living through clashes between classes and between the masses and the state. And uh, the important thing, I think, it's interesting in this point, the parallel between uh, US and Argentina that you were making, because uh, though we are not a majority force by any means, the a revolutionary left exists in Argentina, right. which has positions in the unions, has positions as a public, a political electoral force in the unemployed workers movement, the Piquetero movement, which is a um, uh, maybe a particularity of the class struggle in Argentina in the last decades, has uh, you know a, a tradition and, and and a mass and mass roots. Uh, so. We are trying to fight for an independent opposition to this, uh, to to this this government and to this crisis of the bourgeoisie. I think recent history in the states has been very interesting because it has shown that contrary to many demoralized and sort of adapted to the bourgeoisie leftists who said the time for revolution was over and people just aren't interested and people just don't have the struggle in them. We've seen the George Floyd uprisings. Right. We've seen. Uh, a turn to the left of thousands of, of, of North America and U.S. Uh, youths and workers, but which, of course, has not been channeled into an independent political force. Right. But this is being through the uh, political will and decision of, of channeling into the Democratic Party, which I think uh, will take it to a, a great frustration because DSA, even though it says it's an independent organization, actually acts as a wing of the uh, Democratic Party. Uh, so I, I think this, it's, it's important to debate these crises in parallel, because if we do not form an independent political alternative, uh, then we will lead what radicalization and, and, and labor organization exists. And in this point, I think in the States, you are living a very interesting time of organizing new unions, of, of new, more combative union leaderships and strikes. Of radicalization of young people, but uh, if this is just fed into the old um, parties, you know, it, it, nothing, nothing new will, will come of it, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's a, yeah, you there's know, a... and definitely, uh, I think it's very, um, how do you say this? It, it's very interesting for us to see that the level of a mass movement that has uh, developed in the states and in Europe. Um, in regards to Palestine, and we we support that in, in Argentina, we are organizing um, Jews for Palestine, uh, sort of modeled on mm. uh, on Jewish Voice for Peace in mm. the in in the states in particular. We, we're promoting this. the The movement does not have the the mass character it has in in, in the states, but we are definitely promoting internationalist in consciousness. Uh, the level of crisis, social and economic, lo locally, is, is making it difficult to uh, to sort of uh, be able to, to put international points on the agenda in this, this past year, uh, as, I, as I sh I'm sure you can imagine, with 250% inflation, 
there's just not much uh, space for mass agitation on points outside sort of the immediate uh, demands and, and struggles. But um, but that just 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 saying, I, I definitely think this international struggle in the states has also served to sort of paint the picture of what the Democrat Party and Biden have to offer, because their solution is uh, to uh, strengthen imperialist exploitation of the world. Not well, yeah, that anti imperialist of course, but uh, yeah, they're yeah. definitely more. Uh, he's, he, they're definitely even the more militaristic wing of the uh, U.S. bourgeoisie, right? So, right. He, <laughs> as difficult as that is to imagine. Yeah, I mean the you know, and I'm I'm here in Minneapolis. I'm just a few miles from George Floyd Square. Um, you know, this is, uh, this has been kind of the center of that, you know, there's, there's been huge struggles here, but yeah, like you said, they're not really channeled into mass organizations in the same way. There are some caucuses within the DSA that are trying to channel, challenge the, you know, democratic socialists of America's, uh, you know, uh, uh, tie, tie into the democratic party. There's other socialist organizations outside of DSA, but again, yeah, it's just not as well organized and it's certainly not channeled into, um, you know, something that can really challenge, uh, doesn't seem to be something that can really challenge the Democratic Party uh, in a serious way anytime in the near future. Although there's a lot of stuff, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening still. The Palestine Solidarity Move Movement is bringing a lot of new people in, but um, uh, yeah, well, again, they're, they're very, somewhere. they don't have a tradition yet of, go ahead. It's got to start somewhere, it's got exactly. to start sometime, right? Exactly. And if Trump comes back, he, you know, uh, I'm sure he'll be a very good friend uh to malay uh and will be you know probably it'll mean terrible things for you guys as well uh as well as us yeah. he said the first he's only going to be a dictator the first day i remember him saying he's going to drill 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 and he's going to go after his enemies and stuff so uh you know he's going to be trying to do the shock and awe thing too i imagine if he gets uh in power again um we just have a tiny little bit of time left uh we're we're uh, we're running low here is there anything else you want to say before you go you have like a minute <laughs> No, no, thanks for yeah. the space, and, and let's definitely be in touch with, with new developments, and uh, to take advantage of this to uh, send our support, our solidarity to all of those revolutionary militants and organizations in the states trying to organize uh, from within against our uh, the worst enemy of the Argentine working class and, 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 and the peoples of the world, which is uh, U.S. imperialism, and I think that we... We need you guys as, as allies. Uh, we need the international solidarity of the working class and organizations. So uh, to all those comrades organizing against uh, the U.S. imperialism in the belly of the beast, as a revolutionary once said, uh, send you a salute and uh, solidarity. solidarity. Take care. All right.